What's up woodworkers, Ben here, and I've got my hands on the PT254 planar thicknesser from Lumberjack Tools. Today, I'm gonna to be unboxing it and showing you how to get it set up while also pointing out a few of its key features along the way. Let's get started. I'll be dropping in some hints and tips for you as I get this set up. My first tip comes really early. This thing is well packaged, and as such, it's a bit tricky to get out of the box, especially on your own. I found the easiest thing to do was just to tear off one side. You can then pull a small piece of polystyrene off it for fun, and then, once you've had enough fun, you can just slide the whole thing out. It was then much easier to pull the machine out of the bottom section of the polystyrene. Once it's out of the box, you can unwrap the accessories, and you might find that this handle is a bit oddly packaged as the plastic wrapping is attached on the inside, so it doesn't come off particularly easily. I ended up taking a Stanley knife to it and carefully just running it around the edges to cut it off. You can then just pop it onto the spindle here. Next up, you'll need to remove the support braces that are designed to keep everything supported during transport. So don't panic if one comes with dents or dings in it. That just means it's doing its job. Just remove the screws and then you can throw these in the bin. Once you've got it all unpackaged, it's time to attach the fence. Just spin it around and you'll see these two bolts which need removing and then attaching back in through these holes in the fence. It's worth pointing out that this comes with an Allen key so that you can use it to get this set up. But if you use Allen keys much, then you should consider getting yourself a decent set like I've got, just so that you have one quality set rather than loads of cheap naff ones all piled up in a drawer or something like that, like I used to have. You can then just screw them back in through the holes in the fence. The fence has this little flappy thing that opens and locks off the horizontal adjustment. It's a little stiff, but it's not too bad. You'll need to use this when converting from planar to thicknesser, and you'll keep it locked when it's in planar mode. Once you've got your fence attached, you'll need to check and adjust it to make it square to the bed. To do this, you'll need a reliable square, like an engineering or machinist square. As you can see on mine, the fence is slightly out, as you can see light behind the top edge, which means that the top needs to pull inward to square it up. You can do this by loosening the nut here, and then adjusting this little screw on the fence adjuster until you're happy with it. Once you are happy with it, you can lock it in place by tightening the nut back up. The blade guard is really easy to adjust. All you do is flip this little lever and it slides in and out. Then just flip it back shut when you're done. The tool won't actually work until you have the dust extractor hood attached. This is a safety feature and means that you can't accidentally turn the machine on until everything is properly in place. This slot is where the safety trigger is, but in order to get everything properly in place, you need to adjust the fence to allow the necessary room for the dust hood. Simply unlock the fence, slide it across, and tilt it as far back as it will go. You've got another slot on this side which secures the other side of the dust hood, and you'll need to make sure that your blade guard is fully retracted and lifted up to make enough room so that you can slide the dust hood in place. Then you can lock the side bits in place, and then screw in this little bit here which fits into a hole on the planer bed to align everything. You need to make sure this little bit on the back is properly inserted, and then you can adjust the thickness to your desired thickness and start using it. When you want to put it into planer mode, you'll first need to remove the dust hood and drop the thickness of bed all the way down so that you can insert the dust hood in this way around, making sure that you lock in the tabs on the side again. Then, you'll find the hole to screw the alignment screw in again from underneath, which lines it all up again. Get your fence all straightened up and locked in place, and you're good to go with some planing or jointing. I tested it out by planing the face of a random piece of hardwood I've got. It comes with these push blocks, and they're really good to use. Nice, heavy-duty feeling plastic, and good grippy rubber on the bottom. I was happy with the way it did the face, so I then did the edge of the board, pushing it up against the fence with the face I'd just planed. And you can see here that the results were perfectly square on the face and the edge. The tool also comes with a metal stand which you can choose to put the tool on or not. To assemble the stand, you're going to want to add the rubber feet to the bottom of the legs initially. They're a bit fiddly, but it does make for a nice tight fit. Then you want to lay a couple of the legs out and get one of the red cross braces. These red pieces will go on the front and the back of the stand. You'll need two of the nuts, bolts and washers and then you can go ahead and attach the bolts through the front and then attach the washers and nuts from the back. You'll only want to finger tighten them at this stage so that you have enough play to get everything lined up in a bit. Do exactly the same with the other two legs so that you have a front pair and a back pair. 
Next, take the shorter black pieces with the smaller lip on that matches the red ones and attach these to the sides. I attach one end of each to one pair of legs and then attach the second pair of legs in the same way with the bolt through the outside and the washer and nut on the inside until it was all connected up. I chose to stand it up the proper way round, but you might want to place it upside down if it's easier for you. This is the point where you attach the top pieces with the wider lip. I attach the shorter side pieces first, but I guess it doesn't really matter which way round you do it as long as your front and back pieces overlap the side pieces. You attach them to the legs in the same way, with the bolts through the outside and a washer and nut on the inside. I then flipped it over to tighten everything up. You'll need a 14mm spanner or socket to tighten all the nuts. Finally, you'll want to attach it to the stand. The idea is to keep the rubber feet on the machine, but bolt through the stand and into them. Firstly though, you're going to need to remove the rubber feet and take out the original bolts. You'll have some of these longer bolts that you basically just replace them with. This is probably the trickiest bit of the whole assembly, as you're going to need to line up the rubber feet and the planer with the holes on the stand. I found the best way to do this was to add the feet to the stand and then fit the bolts through them. They stayed in reasonably well while I placed the machine onto the stand and tried to line up the feet as best as I could. Then a little wiggle here, a little jiggle there, I can get all the holes lined up and tightened up. I noticed there were holes in each foot on the stand and I thought it would be really useful to have this on wheels so that I can pull it out for plenty of in-feed and out-feed space, but then I can put it out of the way when it's not in use. So I had this old piece of kitchen worktop that happened to fit perfectly. So I picked up a set of locking casters for a tenner off Amazon and attached them to the base. I could then attach this base to the stand with a few screws and washers and voila, I now have the simplest mobile base you can get. Hopefully you found this video useful and I've added a link to the planar thicknesser, the Allen key set and the locking casters in the description of the video if you wanna buy any for yourself. And I've added a link here to a video that I think you'll like next. See you on the next one.